Today on This James the Bike Guy, we're doing something a bit different than what we typically do. Instead of taking a look at a new piece of cycling equipment, we're going to take apart an old piece of cycling equipment. So right now, it's winter where I live, uh, which means the riding is a little few and far between, so we're inside all the time. And, uh, well, I'm kind of interested in what's inside of a smart trainer. So I ended up having the opportunity to come across this uh, power unit off of a Saris power sink. Uh, so the Saris power sink, from my understanding, was the second generation of smart trainers from Saris, uh, or formerly called Cyclops, I should say. And the power sink is what precursed the Magnus, or the M2 that you see uh, on sale today. Well, anyways, this happens to be the Bluetooth version. Um, this one is no longer functioning, and unfortunately, I don't know why. But uh, we're about to pull this thing apart, and hopefully we'll find some cool gems in here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, but go ahead and sit back and enjoy with me. Um, to start off with, I think what I want to do first is there's a little plastic cap here on the top uh, that I think is going to allow us to get this... Uh, uh, get access to the flywheel here. All right, so that does pry apart, comes right off, and we're going to run into our first socket that we're going to need. So, two seconds. So it turns out that that's a uh, 14 millimeter, so let's go ahead and see if my little impact uh, can take this off. All right, so we've got a little nylon lock nut there. And then, how does this come apart? Can't imagine this is the proved way, but uh, All right, uh, well that was a lot more work than I expected, um, but off it came. So here we've got the flywheel uh, clearly pressed on. You can see that that's a press fit kind of uh, situation there. I did bang it up just a little bit, hammering at it. Um, but one of the things I think is kind of neat is so take a look at those holes. Uh, if I were a betting man, those holes on this flywheel are actually for balancing this out. So it probably runs a bit smoother. And if we go ahead, toss this on our scale, I'm curious what this weighs. This is pretty heavy. So 1,250 grams. So this guy right here is just about the weight of, you know, a pretty average carbon or better quality aluminum road bike. So we'll put the flywheel aside and let's move on. So checking this out, we can see that's a, uh, a metal roller there. You can see uh, in here, this is that shaft that it was uh, pressed up against. And then this is going to be the magic to make it work. So you see these three different magnets. So a smart trainer like this, it uses magnets against your metal flywheel to create the resistance. So when this is pushed together, the magnets themselves come within just a few millimeters of the inside of your flywheel. That's what's going to essentially resist uh, your flywheel from spinning. So those look like uh, Phillips heads here. So let's go ahead and take that off and see what we got behind it. So just that plastic cover, I'm assuming that this plastic cover keeps those magnets from uh, getting damaged or in the way. Um, we'll take that off in a bit. Let's go ahead and see what we got on the other side of the trainer here. Step down to a smaller screwdriver. So 
So that end cap comes off pretty easy. And there we've got a little circle clip uh, that's going around the shaft. Huh, actually, check this out. So you see that hanging? These magnets are pretty strong. It just caught my, uh, my steel wedding band. Huh, well that's interesting. So I have to pull that apart in just a little bit. So let's see. Now keep in mind this is not how you take circle clip off, but uh, I'm not worried about damaging this because it's already broken. So the circle clip will come off. And somehow I think when we get this case apart, that's gonna come out. So this next bit here, I think is what's gonna allow us to get into some of the goods of, uh, of our little resistance unit here, but I can't quite tell if they're uh, just really funny shaped torques uh, or if they're one of those safety, uh, safety bolt shapes. But let's see what happens when we try to... So it turns out with... Uh, looks like a T10 Torx, I can start to get this undone. So take these guys out. This is definitely not the right tool for it, but uh, it's the tool that's allowing it to happen. Now it's interesting with these screws that are coming out, they're like a traditional just screw that you'd put into plastic or something like that. You know, not, uh, not going into anything metal on the other side. So I'm assuming this is just a little bit of, a little bit of housing to hold everything together. Interesting. So right now, I've got that screw out of the way, and right now, these two are relying on each other. So to interesting. Okay, so we've got a couple torques right there. I think that's what needs to, I don't know what size uh, that is, but it's smaller than what we've got here. So time for a little destructive removal. All right, that wasn't all that bad. So here we've got our three magnets together. I think this is now going to allow us to take that piece apart, but while we're here, the magnets, 86 grams, so a little bit of weight right there. Let's put that aside. Now that comes apart, and we've got some good stuff here. Well, that's not quite playing nice, so we'll go ahead and help motivate these wires out. Oh, well, not every day are you born a genius, and I certainly wasn't. There was a connector. <laughs> so now we're at the board. So if we remember that magnet, that went on here. And so check, check this out. So with the magnet on, this can slide in and out. And you'll see it's got a mechanism right there that is doing that. And I bet what's happening is it's sliding in and out of the flywheel. Huh. I bet that is what's happening. And that is essentially what's increasing and decreasing the resistance is with these guys all, all good to go, how much magnetism you got going to the flywheel. Interesting. So, let's see what else we can get into here. Uh, that's a little bit more of these 
torxy looking bits that don't quite seem seem right, but let's see if we can get Okay, that connector undid. Yeah, those are definitely not Torx, but that T10 is really coming in clutch. Okay, so this board starts to come apart. We've got a connector there. Huh, interesting. So I don't uh, begin to claim that I know anything about electronics, but it looks like you've got a connector that goes to the servo that's essentially moving this back and forth. So you get that out of the way, you can see how that was working and basically on the other side you've got the servo that's actuating that and then the board is going through and it's got glue coming down to this little sensor which I don't know what it is That is uh, some of the strongest hot glue I think I've come across. Leading me to believe that that's probably not hot glue. Let's see what we got underneath here. Actually, real quick, we'll remove that servo bit. Okay, so that mechanism came out. That's buttery. Huh. Interesting. No idea what I'm looking at. But now you can see that cord that's going down to our little board here. And when we start to pull this apart, Came out pretty easy. Blueradio.com. Hmm. I'm guessing, since it says blueradio.com, I bet you that's the Bluetooth uh, module. And in fact, take a look at that. It's got the B right on it. So that's your Bluetooth module that's going to board. So in case anyone wants to see what this board looks like. Hmm. And interesting. So this guy that's on the end sticking out, where was that when this was installed? Interesting. So that is installed right here. Let me flip that around so you can see. And so you've got these little, almost looks like lights, but I think they're a sensor for how fast this is rotating. So if you take a look, let's get that out of the way. that together and then you see that black mark on our roller I bet you that black mark is doing two things it's both covering up I bet there's a a hole underneath there to get this axle out but it looks like it's going through on an optical sensor so this sensor here says sensor side to it and the back side is connector side so well there you go but interesting no idea what that actually does but that's our board that comes inside 
Now, of course, we've got wires for it to connect. And on this side, we've still got, oh, because it's got a little, another one of those silly almost Torx bits. Let's see if we can get that undone here. Guessing that rotates up. Out that comes. A ports cap from India. Hmm. Well, there you go. So that's just some residual trash. Let's go ahead and take my knife here and let's see what's underneath that little little sticker that I think works with an optical sensor. I'm guessing that's how it, it measures RPM. But yes, we've got a little hole there, which uh, if I were a betting man, it's going to be some sort of... So, well that unscrewed all the way, but not as friendly to get out as I might have initially expected. Time for the hammer again. So you can see the keyway. So rotate, you see that flat spot? That's a that's a keyway for the axle. Please don't yell at me in the comments. I know this is janky. Okay. Boom. So there comes our axle. It's actually two keyways. I'm wondering what that second one was for. Let's go ahead and get this roller out. Wow, would you look at that? So this is a aluminum roller. It is very clearly uh, extruded in this shape and then they machine it down, which would make sense for it to, to be manufactured that way. Wow, that is quite a nice piece of hardware. Well, let's get these out of the way because uh, yeah, I'm curious what this weighs too. 159 grams. It's about twice what our magnets weighed. Of course, magnets and aluminum uh, doesn't, doesn't magnetize, but interesting nonetheless. And inside of here, we've got some pretty beefy sealed bearings. So check that out. Let me get it to this side so you can see in there. It's a good looking sealed bearing setup, and these are enduro bearings. Let's see if we can. They're a R8VV sized, which I'm not familiar with that nomenclature. Um, very interesting. The one on, so this would have been the drive side. That one is a little bit greasy for some reason. I wonder, I wonder what was in there that made that greasy. Well, I am pretty sure that that's pretty much all we can take apart here. And I'm not sure what we can take away other than the machining looks really nice. Um, this is darn heavy. I mean, it's as heavy as, you know, a quality aluminum frame. I mean, 12, 1200 grams, I think we said. And then roller's pretty well machined. You got magnets that magnetize. So that's pretty cool. I think that uh, that sliding mechanism, that was certainly something I wasn't expecting to see in there. Then again, I don't totally know how it all works together, but you can see it's uh, pretty well machined out too. Um, and the neat thing with a lot of this stuff from Saris is this is all manufactured in the US. Uh, I believe it's still the case, I'm not entirely sure, but pretty much anything that's not a chipboard, uh, they still manufacture here in the States, which is, you know, I. I think it's pretty impressive. Um, chipboard, which 
if you guys know anything about this or, or rather if you guys have more information or well any information since I haven't really given you much about what we saw uh, I'd really love for you to put that down in the comments below uh, while you're at it go ahead and hit that thumbs up or the like button it uh, it really helps me know that you enjoyed this uh, leave a comment too if you enjoyed this type of video um, I've got a lot of old bike parts and uh, maybe we should take them apart if uh, if you think we should let me know what kind of parts you would take uh, take apart or have me take apart rather. And then finally, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Uh, I post a couple times a week with all sorts of bike parts, reviews, things like that, occasional bike rides, and apparently disassembly videos too. Well anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great ride and see you in the next video.